This is an ABC podcast. Pill testing at music festivals refuses to go away as an issue, mainly because state governments are reluctant to approve pill testing, despite calls by the Australian Medical Association and the Royal Australasian College of Physicians, neither organisation known for their radical sympathies. Polling suggests the majority of voters support pill testing too, and still young people are dying. Media coverage says there have been six deaths since summer, since the summer began. In Victoria, the crossbench is wanting action. St Kilda Council wants to conduct a pill testing trial, and yet the Labour government in Victoria is refusing to budge, despite setting up a trial of a safe injecting room. In New South Wales, there's growing pressure on the coalition government. So at least the squeamishness is on both sides of the aisle. Olivia Willis reports on health for the ABC Science Unit and has been investigating the facts behind pill testing. Welcome back to the Health Report, Olivia. Thanks, Norman. So let's just, where in the world do they do pill testing at the moment? So, so I, well, in Europe they refer to it as um, drug checking and there are services pretty widely available in, yeah, kind of across Europe. I think it's between 15 and 20 countries that kind of routinely have services available at festivals and also in the community where you can actually go to places and get um, drugs tested. Um, but in Australia, we've just had one trial so far, which was at um, the Groove and the Move Festival in Canberra last year. We'll come to just what was done in that trial and the situation in Australia in a moment. But when you look across Europe, is there evidence that pill testing reduces deaths? Evidence that it reduces death is tricky. Like any harm reduction measure, I think harm reduction experts or advocates will, will point that a clear reduction in deaths can actually sometimes be difficult to show because it, they're as, I guess, interventions, they can be difficult to evaluate. But in terms of reducing harm, yes, the evidence points to the fact that, that it can be an effective way to reduce harm. So um, in, in terms of evaluations from the services operating in Europe, that shows that having pill testing services can lead to less drug taking and can help people to consume drugs in a safer way. So whether that's um, choosing not to take a drug that they intended to or taking a smaller dose of that drug after they've, after they've had it tested. And this is reminiscent of the debate about uh, needle inje safe, safe injection rooms mm. and needle exchanges during the early days of the HIV epidemic, where people said, well, this is going to be a permission license for immoral behaviour and intravenous drug use, is there, and which in fact wasn't true. Is there any evidence that pill testing, drug testing in increases usage? No, there's certainly no evidence from, from the European trials or the, the services that exist there that it would lead to an increase in drug use. And as I said, actually research points to that it could probably decrease um, drug use and, and decrease um, drug-associated harm, I suppose. Um, and actually the UK, they had their first pill testing trial at a music festival. They published their results from that. I think it was in December and they found that it was something like one in, I think one in five substances tested was not what people expected and among those people who got the results that you know they got a surprising result that the the pill or the capsule that they handed over didn't have what they thought it did about two-thirds of them chose to hand over more drugs to be destroyed and and researchers in the US and Austria and Germany and actually some research that's been done in Australia in the early 2000s made kind of similar findings that if people who people who use pill testing services they're less likely to consume drugs if they're told the drugs contain harmful substances that seems to be a clear and result. remind us what they found at the Canberra trial? So the Canberra trial, they had, I think it was 125 people visited the, the pill testing tent and 83 samples were tested. And the, they found that more than 80% of people believed they were taking MDMA or they believed that ecstasy was in the pills that they brought. And in reality, less than half of the samples contained relatively pure MDMA. So I think it was 42 of those 70 pills contained some MDMA, 32 contained a high purity of that. Um, there were a significant number of samples that contained filler or cutting agents. And there was also, they found traces of antihistamines, of caffeine, dietary supplements, oil, um, toothpaste was found. So a whole array of things um, that I am sure people didn't expect. Um, but importantly, they, they found two potentially lethal substances. So one was um, N-ethylpentalone, which 
we know was responsible for the hospitalisation of um, a dozen people in New Zealand last year. So they detected that. And they also found what they believed to be was kind of a cousin or associated with a drug known as M-Bone, which is kind of a, a deadly synthetic hallucinogen. And how, how accurate and reliable is the technology? Because it's fine having pill testing, but if the technology is not up to the job, um, uh, is, it, is it comprehensive? Is it going to find everything? I mean, it's unlikely to, isn't it? Mm. So basically what it does is the, the technology, the machine that's used at, well, at the camera trial is called an FTIR um, spectrophotometer. And the idea is that it uses kind of a laser beam. It checks samples against a library of 30,000 chemical compounds. And there has been some concern raised that, well, can it detect all you know new psychoactive substances? And, and there's been a huge explosion of those drugs, particularly in recent years. So the machine itself... I mean, the, the people that run the trial say they think it's very robust technology. It can detect, it, it can't detect the exact nature of every new drug because they're emerging faster than the rate in a way that we can keep up with them. But it can detect the presence of unknown substances. So if there is something in there that is a new drug, the machine will still be able to detect that it's there, but we might we'll not be necessarily able be able to it identify is. it. But in that case, what happens is it's given, so um, drugs kind of, the, the test basically, you're given a classification um, and it's, it's kind of given what's known as a red result or it's red flagged, meaning if there is something in there that is unknown and they don't know what it is or what it's effect could be they'll kind of give you a red result saying we you know very strongly against advise you against not taking this because we don't know what's in it and we don't know what the effect could be seems like a fairly simple choice for politicians yeah, there's also, I mean, in terms of other kind of toxicology concerns, there's, there's been some concern around detection limits of the technology. Um, I think there was, a, there was a piece, there was a toxicologist last week that raised the idea of, you know, can it detect traces of things like carfentanil, a very potent and dangerous opioid, um, which at very small traces can be dangerous. But, you know, I, I put that to the people running the trial um, and they said, look, it's possible that the machine may not be able to, to detect some substances at very, very low levels, but they said it was very unlikely that at such levels it would cause any harm. So they're very confident in the kind of safety and efficacy of the technology that if there's something in there, whether they can identify it or not, they certainly can detect it and advise you know, on that. Olivia, thanks for joining us. No problem. Olivia Willis's article can be found on ABC Science Online via the ABC's website. You're listening to The Health Report here on ABC RN, ABC News and CBC Radio across Canada. I'm Norman Swan.